Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a, an upper flat plane appliance. This is the first video I'm making uh, from the actual design perspective, uh, just in case it matters, but um, it's because it's probably one of the most commonly used appliances. It's fairly simple. It can be used on most patients fairly safely. It won't address all sort of TMD, is TMD issues, but it's a fairly safe design. So upper flat plane appliance uh, or maxillary flat plane. So right now we've already got the software opened up. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's set to maxilla. What do you know, it's already set to flat plane. And now I can import my STL models. Click on this box and I can navigate to wherever I need it to be. And, uh, or I can go ahead and, um, let me minimize this for a second. Here's this little folder I have of these. And I can grab these and drop them right in here and click and then highlight them. Basically by dr dragging them in there, it just navigated for me to the desktop that. Personally, I just like to come into here. I find the folder, a clusal guard, uh, demp, I meant to say temp, whatever. Um, select these hold the shift button, not the control button to select both of them. That's weird. I'm not sure why they do that in Blender, but that's how it works and click import. So I've got my models imported and I am ready to get designing. Okay. So now the software you'll see, we're going to be working down the left side one after another. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit set splint model and that's it. You see it kind of highlights whichever model. I'm click on this one, then I'm going to set opposing and there's that one. Now that I've marked the models, I want to actually go up for a second. Right up here, there's a little checkbox. It does not become visible until you have set the splint model. Um, I've already checked the splint model, the opposing model as well, but that doesn't really matter. This use print raft. I'm going to show you in a little while why that's important, but I'm going to go ahead and check that box. It will be helpful in the future. So now I can go ahead and hit set landmarks. And now it's going to tell me there's always directions in the top right corner what to do. And there's a little label of what the task is right in the top in the middle. So I'm going to check, I'm going to click on the right molar. I like to click on the mesial lingual cusp. Now the left molar, now the incised ledge, and now the midline. If you can't find it, look for the incisive of the papilla. It's right around there. Okay, so that's sort of how our models will be aligned. Click finish and it'll even show us an articulator. It doesn't have a whole lot of value to what I need it for as far as the visual of the articulator, but, um, and you can always turn it off by little turning off this little eyelid over here, this little eyeball, and then it hides. So at this point, hopefully you have taken your bite relation, your occlusal relation, with the uh, in the um, in the position you plan to make your appliance, I don't recommend taking a you know, uh, a bite in uh, maximum intercusp intercuspation because now you have to use the software to open up the bite. That's changed the pin setting. You can open up the bite if you want, but now you're relying on you know uh, the articulator values to be accurate, in which they should be. But why not just get the bite? you know, the way you need it. And I have a video online for how I take my bite. I'm not going to talk about that here right now, but anyway, this is the bite we want to use for this. So I can skip over all these. They don't have little boxes, which means I don't have to click on any of these. Now I'm going to click on the one, this one that does, this is survey model. What this does is it's going to give me a, an opportunity to determine my path of insertion. I can say, this is how I want to insert it. This is how I want to insert it, whatever. Generally speaking, I just move it a little bit down, click capture view, and I'm done. I like to review it. All the shadows, the dark gray, are basically where there's undercuts. As you can imagine, the more undercut there is on the front, the anterior teeth, the less there will be behind the second molars. If I instead set it like this, like we're going to be inserting it this way, you see all those shadows disappear but now there's shadows behind the anterior teeth, behind the molars and whatnot. So you're just sort of setting it up approximately the way you want, hit capture view, and then look how, 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 if you like it or not. You can make small adjustments with these little buttons up here, which is gonna be tweak posterior or tweak anterior, whatever you wanna do there, okay? 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and click Commit when I'm ready. And so now this view, the little orange lines just shows me where those undercuts are. I do need to save. So I'm going to go ahead and just call this uh, OG demo. Uh, that's, well, it wasn't supposed to be temp, it was supposed to be demo, mm -hmm. not demp. OG de OGD and upper flat plane. All right. So I am done there. I can hit save blender file and it's going to save that file. That's just in case you screw something up, you can always get back to there. Now I'm going to click on refractory model. Refractory model is basically going to wax out all those undercuts. Now this is a chance for you to change, to determine how tight your appliance is going to be. The defaults are an offset of 0.12 millimeters. So that's how big the gap is between the appliance and the, the model. And the undercut is how deep does it bite into these undercuts. I like to have mine fairly tight. I dial it down to 0.06 and I dial the undercuts up to 0.08. So two clicks to the left, one click to the right, and I'm done. I can go ahead and click OK. It's going to create a model that is sort of green looking. OK. Now, when that's done, now that's actually the model that the appliance is going to be made off of. OK, so this is how it's actually what it's actually being made on. OK, and now I can go ahead and mark my splint outline. So where do I want my splint to be? So I'm, I like to have it sort of right at the, you know, at the junction of the middle and gingival uh, third of the, the incisors. And then you can come right up along the canines as is you know, the more common design. And I'm just sort of marking all the way around. You can actually, and I've just started doing this, start drawing your line, but I'm not so much a big fan of that. Uh, I'm just used to doing the, um, just click a dot. I like that more. Um, so if you need to pick up, you just click on this one so it knows that that's what the last dot was. For instance, if I click here, it doesn't know how to connect those. So make sure that this one is bright green and I can click, click. I like to put one right apical to every tooth, depending on where I want that. If the laterals are super small, sometimes it's more, more palatal um, and whatnot, but you will kind of determine how you like to do this on your own. Notice that this premolar is pretty short, so I don't, I'm not going to bring the line all the way up there. And then when you're done, if you just bring the mouse sort of close to it, not quite touching it, it turns this big line, big green circle. And there you go, it's continuous. Now, if you look at the whole line, you're looking for red or orange, I can't remember if it's yellow or orange uh, lines. That means where the line may have disappeared into the model. So I can always move a node, but my line is pretty good right here. It's not showing me any problems. So I can go ahead and click the next button at the bottom. At this point, it wants me to pick the interior region of the splint. So you get a little out, you know, uh, eyedropper, and you just click the teeth on the inside, and then here we go. We've got a nice, it's just purple on the inside of the appliance, and then it's not on the outside. If it was all purple, that tells you there's something wrong with your line. You need to go back a step and fix something, you know, take a look at where your line is discontinuous. Click next, and it shows you that nice crisp cut and then click next again. So we are now ready to actually design our appliance. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to, I'm going to be creating sort of a wax rim. Um, and so to do that, I want it to be as far to the buckle as I can of the upper teeth. Um, and so first I am marking the maxillary curve. And I'm clicking on the buckle most aspect of every tooth unless there's like a tooth where it's sort of inset from the line. I don't want the line to squish inward. There are ways to customize these lines afterwards, but I don't like to dink around with that. I just like to get it right the first time. Now I'm going to click on the mark mandible because this is going to give us a chance to sort of mark the internal aspect. 
Where you put this is up to you. Some people put it right in the central groove because ideally it's the buckle cusps that are occluding, but I like to have my rim a little bit wider. So you can go with the lingual cusp. I tend to go right between the central groove and the lingual cusps. There's, I mean, that's not a lot of great direction. I apologize, but put it wherever you want um, and you'll be fine. <laughs> and All right, so there's my lines, and I can say commit. And so I can scroll down over here. These little items right here, where it says background, these are things that have been happening in the background the whole time. It made a splint shell, which is this. It made it checked the minimum thickness, or it makes a little minimum thickness to make sure that we don't adjust our appliance so it's too thin. And right now it's creating a dynamic surface, which is basically protrusive and lateral protrusive movements. If I click wax a splint wax rim, I can click OK, and here's the wax rim based on where I drew those lines. So imagine if you had make marge your darts in the central groove, this would be thinner there. So What's right, what's wrong, I don't know that there is such a thing, but that's just how I do it. So there's the wax rim. And now I'm going to click on Fuse Max Wax Rim, or Rim to Shell. So it's going to turn this, right now they're two separate objects, blue and green. It's going to create one object from the two. And it smooths it out a bit. You will notice that um, on the inside here, there's almost like a little area where you could trap your tongue. Um, if you don't like that area, you can say block out uh, large concavities and watch what happens in here. It sort of fills that in, okay? You can always click this remesh smooth as many times as you want, which just further smooths it out. It's like taking a candle um, to a wax up, um, but I don't really, it's already pretty smooth right now, and I'm gonna be using that button in a little bit. So now I can go down to um, this little go to sculpt just so you know it's here I'm not going to teach you anything about it but these are your sculpt tools where you can add and subtract and do whatever you want to it um, I very rarely use this at all but that's where it is um, when you're done with it and you want to move on to the next step make sure you click finish paint sculpt this little gray color of the splint is there to be an indicator to remind you oh you're still in that now we're back to the teal or aqua whatever this color is so we now need to mark our posterior contacts okay now it says mark posterior contacts I'm gonna tell you that's a little bit of a misnomer because this is a flat plane appliance I need to mark not just the posterior contacts but the anterior contacts so basically mark all contacts is what I'm getting at these um, these cusps have uh, the lower premolars have fairly large mandibular uh, lingual cusps. So that's why I marked them. A lot of times I don't, but because they're a little bit more um, obvious, I went ahead and marked them. So I've marked all the cusps. Okay, so it's creating a flat plane. Now just understand a flat plane is not a flat plane appliance is not actually flat. It's flattish because our teeth aren't flat. So it creates this sort of a you know wavy pattern to it. If I click next, you'll see it a little bit better. So this is the flat plane that it is creating. You can use little tools to adjust this, but I almost almost never do. It just it don't need to. It worked. So click commit, and now I can subtract the. Um, uh, sorry, right up here. Subtract posterior plane. Underneath that box where it said mark posterior contacts, that's what we just did. And so I click this and um, it's going to cut out the posterior plane from our appliance. Notice there's a sharp edge because everything got cut away. Okay. We also created a... Um, a uh, functional surface which it sounds kind of funny like what is that but let me click over here so you can see it this is what they called the the functional surface and it's a shell of what's happened is as the in the background the software was sliding the mandible forward sliding it to the right sliding it to the left and not just those three directions but every combination between them or you know many 
combinations between those to create this. And so now when I click here, it subtracts that as well. So the, the idea is that now your patient has this flat plane, but also when they go to slide their jaw around, everything should sort of slide together and have sort of a uniform contact. It's not perfect. It's based on the, you know, the, um, uh, articulator parameters that are in the software, which you do have the ability to adjust, which I almost never do. So it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to save you some work as you go to insert this and you have your patient slide around. Most of it's going to be kind of already factored in. So at this point, you are technically done designing your, well, pretty much done designing the outside portion of your appliance. I'm a little picky and I don't like the sharp edge. I want it to be a little more smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slide back up here to remesh smooth button on the left side and watch what happens to the sharp edge. If I click that, click OK, it just sort of smooths that out a little bit. You can click it twice if you want. But that also smooths out the occlusal grooves and everything, which simply means I'm going to click subtract posterior plane and subtract functional surface. It's just one more time that I'm doing that just so that everything is smooth, but still subtracted properly. Now I'm done with that, the actual design aspects. I can turn off my mandibular anatomy. You don't have to, but I'm just going to turn off this little eyeball by the mandible anatomy. And you can see how your appliance is going to fit here. Now, earlier I had you check that box that says use print raft or per tint raft. <laughs> Patrick needs to edit that. Now it says print raft. What I can do is I can click right up here, right on the sort of the incisal edge of the appliance, if you will, right in the midline. And if I click add print raft, click OK, it adds this little guy right to the front of here. This is how I'm going to print my appliance, just like this. This thing is later going to be cut off and just polished away. No big deal. Honestly, I don't move this or manipulate it at all. You have the ability to, with the little red circle here, you can spin it, you can use the arrows to slide it which way or another, but I just don't, it's, it's perfect. Just click there, click the button, and now I'm gonna say join it, because right now, like before we had the, when we had that occlusal rim, these are two separate objects. So we're gonna say join, and now it's one object. It's merged the two of them. So now you really are done. Except one last thing, look at the inside of our appliance. It doesn't look like it's gonna fit very well. So we do have to click on this button, see the little box, finalize the splint. Now it's going to cut out that green refractory model. It's gonna cut that out or subtract that from the actual appliance. So finalize splint. There we go. Our splint is now designed, ready to export, and ready to print. If you don't like the fact that this uh, raft is sort of in this area, it's really not going to worry me too much, but you could I could have moved it so it interfered with it a little bit less. But honestly, I'd rather have this than have supports everywhere. So again, it's pretty easy to adjust that. And if I have to adjust a little bit in the mouth or at chair side, no big deal. But really, these are the occlusal stops back here. This is just when the patient slides forward. So we can get away with this a little bit. And so now I do like to click right here where it says generate report. All the biggest reason I like that is it shows me the offset spacer and the allowed undercut. Because if I ever need to come back and like, hey, my appliance was too tight, now I know what my spacer was, my undercut was, and um, or if it was too loose, like once again. Um, if you have changed your articulator values, it'll also show you all of that. Um, so it's a, a nice little thing. You just click on that. And so now when I click export splint STL, which is the final step, it's automatically, it's going to name it the same file as it was when I designed it, but it's also going to export this little text file. So let's just take a look. Um, I'm going to open up my Rayware software, which is the printing software for um, the Sprint Ray's printing software. Sorry, I'm trying to move this so that it's, it fits into my recording area.
All right. So now I can take my appliance, drag it and drop it in here. If I click on it, I can click on base and this little arrow, lots of your software, most of your software is going to do the same thing. So if you're using a different printer, whatever, notice it's always perpendicular to the model. Come right to the flat part right here and now it's upright. Okay, so whichever printer this is right now, it's set for the, the Sprint Ray Pro 55, but I can change that to the 95. I can come over here to Keystone, Keystone Splint Soft, which is what I want, click apply, and here's my appliance. If it says, you know, it's worried about, don't just ignore the warning. It's, it, it'll print fine. I, I'm very confident. Um, honestly, I can't remember having one fail. Um, now, of course, me having said that, we'll probably jinx my next one. But anyway, that is the entire process from start to finish of getting this appliance ready to print. With as long as that's taken, I'll probably record the next two one next two um, tomorrow. All right, thank you so much. Hopefully this helps. Please, if you have any questions, make sure to um, you can go ahead and put them in the comment section, and be sure to check out my other videos on my website at baronguerrerdds.com.